word, a prepared word that is going to change lives, that's going to impact souls. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, it's been a dynamic morning here at Love Fellowship Church. We invite you to start coming on out and coming back and joining us in worship. Amen. Sign up online. We thank God that you're joining us online, but there's there's an anointing in the house. Amen. And I'm going to tell you this morning is we were here in sound check and doing what we do before service and preparation. The glory cloud fell. And I encourage you to come and be a part of that. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your glory. Thank you for your power. We thank you that you loved us enough to be here. We thank you that you loved us enough to draw us. And Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we open our hearts all the more. We open our spirits all the more. We lift our hands to you. We stand in worship. So right now in our homes, we're going to stand in worship. We're going to stand as one body across this nation and all across the world worshiping you, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we're believing you for miracle signs and wonders, oh God. And increase in the name of Jesus as a result of the divine word and the move that is occurring right now in this broadcast. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Because he is Alpha and he is Omega. Amen. Hallelujah. Those of you here now, stand on your feet and we're going to bless our God. Hey, come on, put your hands together. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll praise, I'll praise your name. Your name. I'll praise, I'll praise your name. Your name. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll praise, I'll praise your name. Your name. I'll praise, I'll praise name. your name. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'll praise, I'll praise your name. Your name. I'll praise, I'll praise your name. Your name.
praise. Of my praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Of my praise. Of my My hallelujah belongs to you. Hey. My hallelujah belongs to you. Some things no one else can say or do for you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yes, oh God. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah. belongs to you yes it blesses him to hear from all and each and every one of us yes my hallelujah belongs to you we bless you oh god hallelujah hallelujah my hallelujah belongs to you my hallelujah belongs to you. Why do we give it to him? Why? Because he deserves it. You deserve 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 it. 
will just stay right there. Tell him. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Father, I won't give it in to anyone else. The glory. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, he is worthy. He is worthy. <laughs> the Lord God Almighty is worthy, hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus, hallelujah. He is worthy on this morning. Hallelujah. He is worthy of praise, glory, and honor this morning. Oh, we bless the name of Jesus. He is worthy. He is worthy. As long as I am breathing, I will.
See, when you go to your regular job, you're under, you're under somebody else's command. <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. <laughs> when you go into your regular job, you're under somebody else's command. <laughs> but when you go into the house of God, you're under God's command. Hallelujah. <laughs> you're under God's command. You're under God's authority. You're under God's dominion. You're under God's power. And the Lord says, amen, that when we come into his house, he said, if we will delight ourselves in him, <laughs> he will give us the very desires of our hearts. Delight yourself in the Lord today in the name of Jesus. Let the Lord be your delight. Hallelujah. Let the Lord be your delight. Uh, I'm encouraging somebody today as the Lord has released me to do so. Let the Lord be your delight in the name of Jesus. Delight thyself in the Lord, the Bible says, and he shall give you uh, uh, the desires of your heart. Let the Lord be your delight this morning. Even as you release your pressures, your pains, your hardships, your struggles, your challenges over to the Lord. I hear the Lord say, I, I'm taking them off of you. <laughs> yes. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Oh God, we enter into your presence. We enter into your power. <laughs> we enter into your anointing. Hallelujah. We enter into your spirit, oh God. Hallelujah. We enter into your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, you came in this place heavy down and burdened and weighted down with so many things. But the Lord says, I'm lifting, I'm lifting, I'm lifting the burdens. Ah. The Lord said, I'm removing the scars and the pain in the name of Jesus. Yes, get your release today. Get your joy back today. Ah, in the name of Jesus, we speak it over your lives. See, the Lord said, you cannot control what the world does. But you can't control what you do in this world. You didn't hear what I said. You may not be able to control what the world does. But the Lord says, surely, surely, you can't control what you do in this world. How you respond to things in this world. How you act upon things in this world. Yes! The Lord said, I've given you that dominion. I've given you that authority. I've given you that ability and power. The Lord said, I've given you that might in the name of Jesus. Even as you <laughs> are listening under the sound of my voice right now, hear the voice behind the voice, the anointing of God's word and burdens are being lifted even now. I speak it over your life, peace. The Lord said, encourage my people, I encourage you right now in the Lord. David learned to encourage himself in the Lord. But then God gives us shepherds. He gives us pastors and five-fold ministry gifts to encourage us as well. As a prophet of God, as a pastor of God, as an overseer in the body of Christ, I encourage you today as a, you know, I, 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 oh, mm. As we were singing my hallelujah, there was a release even in my life because, you know, I'm a businessman. I'm a pastor. I'm a husband. I'm a father. But I'm also a businessman. And in business, there are pressures. <laughs> Just like in life, there are pressures. But as we were praising and worshiping God, that's why you got to be a participator, not a spectator. As we were praising and worshiping God, things that had been in the back of my mind, the Lord said, release it. Huh? Things that had been on my mind, the Lord said, release it. And then he said, teach my people how to release it. Encourage them to release it. I pray, my God, that you receive this prophetic, encouraging word today. Even before we go into the meat of God's word, Lord started with a rhema this morning. In prayer, he started with a rhema. <laughs> in praise and in worship, he's, he, he's continuing the rhema word. That's the revealed word, the inspired word of God. 
being released over our lives. So we thank you, Jesus. Now that the rhema has come, let us eat on the Logos, the written word today, so that we can have a full meal, hallelujah, a full complement of your word. In spirit and in truth, we desire to worship you. And we continue to worship your holy and your righteous name. Be glorified and magnified in our lives and in all that we do and all that we say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. Amen. I tell you, we're just so excited to have each and every one of you that are tuning in by way of Facebook Live or by way of YouTube on today. However you're tuning in, we're just so thankful. Amen. Live service this morning. We're just so thankful and grateful uh, to what the Lord is doing. Uh, and we're just honored. I'm honored to have my sidekick with me, Pastor Renee. Amen. We're just so grateful for Pastor Renee being a part of our lives and especially my life. Amen. I tell you. <laughs> And we're just honored to have each and every one of you in your respective places and your families. Yeah. Know that we are praying for you and your families each and every day. And God's will and God's word will manifest in your lives. So we're in part three of our series entitled Kingdom Families. Everybody say Kingdom Families. Kingdom Families, my God. And so today, amen, we want to continue in the Logos word as God has given it unto us. Uh, and I want to just open up by, by just stating a few things to you. Uh, as kingdom families, let me make this couple of points up front. As kingdom families, we must recognize, Pastor Renee and everybody else, we must recognize the seasons and the times that we are in. Uh, the Lord spoke to me on, on yesterday. He's been dealing with me in regards to this, this third edition of Kingdom Families, uh, it seems like almost every day this week. But on yesterday, he, he, he told me to teach the people that is birthing season. Teach my families, my kingdom families, yes, yes. that is birthing season. Yes. So you got to understand that God wants to birth new and exciting things in and through you. Yes. Amen. Not only in it through you, but also for the benefit of your families. Yes. God wants to birth new visions, new dreams, new opportunities, amen, promotions. God wants to birth, my God, wisdom and revelation, insight. God wants to give new visions and businesses and favor, wow. amen, releasing it over into your life. And I got a testimony just this week as God was speaking to me about the birthing season, amen, that one of the, one of the families at Love Fellowship Church uh, just was blessed with a big, big promotion, a brand new opportunity, amen. <laughs> and we're amen. just thankful, amen, that God is moving in this birthing season. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor Renee. Yes, and during this birthing season, things may look real small right now. Come on. Just like when you have a baby, they start out small, but they don't stay like that forever. Just ask Brother Randy over here. Cannon started out real small, but now he's a big, healthy baby, and he's continuing to grow. And so that's what God has for us. He's got big things in store for us. Yes. It may look small right now, mm -hmm. but you can't be fooled by what you see. You got to know that there's something on the other side. Yes. So as we go into this, let's look at uh, 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. But before we go there, and even as you're going there, mm -hmm. I, I, I want to bring some balance to this. Come on. Because in order for God to do this, we must get our houses in order. Amen. See, God wants to birth things in this new season. And he says, don't despise the small beginnings. Amen. In fact, he told me, he said, he said, celebrate the smallness of things right now. 
He said, appreciate the smallness of things. Mm -hmm. Because just like Pastor Renee was saying, when a baby is born, he's not born six feet tall. Amen. Yeah, amen. He's just born a few inches or she's born a few inches and just a few ounces. Mm -hmm. A few inches and a few ounces. All the size and all the weight and pounds come later. Yes. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, in this, in, this, in this small season where it looks small right wow. now, the Lord says, delight in me. He says, worship me. He says, thank me. He says, praise me. He said, because if you can appreciate the small, small part of the birthing season, he said, when I send the hundreds, when I send the thousands, Come on. my God, because you worship me in the smaller part. Yes. Yes, ah, it yes, will be great, yes. better, better days and greater days ahead. Yes. It shall be very great. Amen. So, so in order for us to appreciate God in this season of birthing, amen, when the, when the baby is small, hallelujah, when the, when the vision is, amen, not fully manifested, when things have not yet all come together, in this season we've got to get our houses in order, amen? Yes. We've got to, my God, prepare wow. ourselves yes. and our families yes. for the new things that God wants to birth mm. in and through us and our families. Yes. Yes, See, yes. there's no birthing without preparation for the Come birth, on, my God. Yes, yes. So let's go, Pastor Renee, as you were saying, again, reading 2 Kings chapter 20, uh, starting at verse 1 in the Amplified Classic Version. Well, Pastor, you know the Lord is speaking. The Holy <laughs> Ghost is speaking. Because yes. when you said prepare, uh -huh. when I think about that, I think about as our families prepare, if any mother or any parent any family that's preparing for the birth of a child, they don't wait until the time when it's the labor pains to get things in order. Right. There's preparation that must take place. There's doctor's visit. There's things that have to be obtained. There's showers. There's preparation. Yes. So as we know that God is moving in this spirit, in the spirit of birthing things in us, we got to be prepared to receive what God has for us. Yes. If we don't prepare now for the great things that God has for us, we won't be prepared for the small things. Mm. My God. Preparation. 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 Everybody say preparation. Preparation. Amen. Yes, yes, Amen. Yes. So let's read in 2 Kings 21 through 6 in, in the Amplified Classic Version. It says, in those days, Hezekiah became deadly ill. Wow. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came and said to him, thus says the Lord. Set your house in order. Yes. For you shall die, you shall not recover. Mm, my God. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, I beseech you, O Lord, earnestly remember how I have walked mm -hmm. or lived yes. before you in the faithfulness and truth and with a whole heart entirely devoted to you mm -hmm. and have done what is good in your sight. Yes. And Hezekiah whipped bitterly. Before Isaiah had gone out of the middle of the court, mm, the word of the Lord came to him. Wow. Sometimes that's all we need is a word. Yeah. A word from the Lord. Turn back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus saith the Lord God of David, your forefather, I have heard your prayer. Come on. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. Yes. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord. I will add, mm, this is a word now, I will add to your life. 15 years wow. and deliver you and this city, Jerusalem, out of the hand of the king of Assyria and will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Wow, 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 wow. There's a lot wow. to unpack in this. Amen. Yes, yes. And so let's begin to, to break this down. Come on. Let's begin to look at this from from a kingdom perspective mm -hmm. and from the perspective of our family. So first of all, when, when, when God told King Hezekiah, get your house in order, wow. he wasn't talking about the palace that he lived in. Mm -hmm. 
No, he was talking about his family, his business affairs. He was talking about the things that pertain to Hezekiah's life. life. So when we hear in the scriptures, get your house in order, is never talking about the physical apartment or the physical home, the roof over your head, if you will. It's always talking about who occupy that home, amen? Who sits up under the roof that's over your head, yes, amen? That's now. your family. Yes. And so we must understand the power of getting our house in order. Let me ask you a question. If God told you today to get your house in order well, because you will surely die, well, what would you do and how would you react? Mm, my God. How would you respond if the Lord said that to you? Mm. The prophet, my God, came with a sure word. But what the prophet did not realize was it was a setup for a new birth. <laughs> if God really intended for, the, for Hezekiah to die, amen, Hezekiah would have died. It would have never been anything he could have said to stop his death, amen. Because the Bible tells us there's a time that's appointed for man to die. die yes. One man to die, all of us, amen. But yet, if there was some wiggle room in there, Pastor Renee, <laughs> that meant that God was up to something real good. Uh -huh. yes. That meant that God, my God, was seeing and testing the preparedness of the, of the King Hezekiah. He wanted to see how prepared King Hezekiah was, amen, in the time of testing. Yes. How prepared are you right now? Wow. We've gone through a year of challenging testing. Have you, amen, can you say over, since March of last year when this pandemic hit wow. that you're more oh, prepared, your family is more prepared now, amen, to meet the Lord than they were before March of last year? Yes. Yes. Are you in better shape in your family, in your household, or are you in worse shape? Mm. What have you done in your preparation season? Yes. And so, amen, <laughs> come on, Pastor, when they add something to that, because I'll take over the whole thing. Let me slow down. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I was thinking that in this past year, just like Pastor Anthony said, how many people have left mm. this earth come on. and did not have their house in order? Yeah. Did wow. not have an opportunity to lead their family to Christ. Wow. Did have, didn't have an opportunity to speak life into the members in their family. Mm. We have to assess what we've done in these, in these past 365 days from this past year and say, what have I done to get my house in order? But I've got good news. God has given us another opportunity. Yes. He's given us another yes. day yes. to get our house in order, just like he gave Hezekiah. Right. He gave him that opportunity. He added 15 more years. All I need is one more day, God, mm -hmm. to share the good news with somebody who doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. Wow. Wow, Use wow. us, Lord, wherever yes. we are, mm -hmm. and not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hezekiah prayed. Yes, he did. And he reminded God of how he had lived faithfully. Yes. How he could be trusted mm -hmm. to perform the commandments of God. Yes. To live according to his word. He had raised his family. He had spoken the life of the words of God in the lives of all his family. Yes. He was prepared, wow. but he said, God, there's still more work for me to do. Mm -hmm. I still have an assignment on my life. My life is in order. I've lived according to your word, but God, give me another opportunity to speak your word, to live according to your word that others may know who you are. Listen to what it says again in verse number three. Hezekiah prayed this prayer. I beseech you, O Lord. Mm -hmm earnestly remember now yes. how I walk before you Live, yes. number one in faithfulness. faithfulness number two in truth yes number three with a whole heart entirely devoted to you yeah then number four I have done what is good, good in your sight wow so you want to know how 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 God was evaluating uh, 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 Hezekiah's Hezekiah. preparedness he was evaluating Hezekiah's preparedness based, based on, on these, these, these characteristics. Yes. And he wasn't just talking about himself. He was talking about everybody in his house. 
because God was speaking about the whole the entire whole house. house. Mm -hmm. The family. The family. Yes. Amen. Everybody that was connected to King Hezekiah, God was saying to them, get your household in, in order. order. Amen. And so the question becomes, can God say that of you? Huh? Wow. Because Hezekiah had to pass the test. Imagine if Hezekiah was not prepared. Imagine if Hezekiah, when he got the bad news, when he got the, the bad report, when, he, when the pressure was put on him, because it came out of the blue. It came all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. He wasn't expecting the prophet to come with a news of death. No, he probably was expecting the prophet to come with a word of life. But the prophet said, you shall surely die. Hezekiah wow. said, hold up, prophet. Let me go and explain to the Lord how I prepared myself for life and not death. Wow. And as a result of it, and as a result of it, my God, the new birth came. Wow. Huh. He went from death to new birth. Hallelujah. Yes, he yes. went from instant death, amen, by the end of the day to a new birth, adding 15 more years yes, to his God. life. What is God saying to us today? If we will prepare our families, if we will prepare our children, if we will prepare our marriages in the same way that Hezekiah prepared his family, guess yes. what? What looks to be dead, God can birth something new in you. He can birth new life in you. Yes. 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 But we have the responsibility of preparation. Yes. Mm. That's not God's responsibility. That's our responsibility. Yes. In our own houses. In our own houses. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. It's birthing season. It's birthing season. Amen. Somebody say it's birthing season. It's birthing season. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory wow. to God. Notice this. Mm. Mm. Notice this. Before there can be a birthing, come on. There must be a breaking. Wow. Come on, brother. You didn't hear down. what I said. <laughs> Before there could be a birthing, there must first be a breaking. Yes. Pastor Renee, explain the natural order. God's natural order of life. Mm -hmm. Explain it. When a woman is about to give birth, the water must break. Unless the water break, the birth can't take place. So there must be a breaking. So if there's a breaking in the natural, there must be a breaking in the spirit. Yeah. See, see, before God set it up this way, man and doctors didn't, gynecologists didn't set it up this way. God set it up this way. Yes. He decided before life can enter into the earth, something must be broken. Yes. Wow. Mm. So we've got to understand that before there can be a birthing or something new birth in you, something has got to be broken break. off of you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. And that's just not for females. That's for males too. That's for the family. Yes. See, if you are afraid of the breaking, you'll never get to the birthing. Hallelujah. Yes. And God says we're in a season of birthing. Mm -hmm. So the focus is not on the breaking, but the breaking is a part of the birthing. Yes. If you catch what I'm saying. Amen. And so we've got to have one working with the other. Amen. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. Turn with us to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. In the Amplified Classic Version, we're going to read verses 1 through 8, Pastor Renee. Come on and start reading there. Okay. It says, when man began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair, mm -hmm. and they took wives of all they desired and chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not forever dwell and strive with man, for he also is flesh, but his days shall yet be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward. When the sons of God lived with the daughters of men and they bore children to them, they were the mighty men who were old men of renown. Let's pause right there. This, 
God woke me up 4 o'clock in the morning. He said, now go here. He said, go to the days of Noah. Now remember, Adam and Eve had already sinned. And in, in the Garden of Eden, which was the prototype of the kingdom of God on the earth. Because remember, we taught this, the Garden of Eden represented God's unending supply. Mm -hmm. there, was no, there was no death, there was no pain, there was no sickness. None of that flowed in the garden, only, only peace. They were, like, they, were, they were just like God created them. Mm -hmm. They were immortal. They were not mortal. They were immortal. In other words, there was no time and space between them and God. Yes. But yet, amen, because of the sin, we know that, that death and, and, and pain and struggle and all those things came Enemy into the earth. earth. Yes. All the way down to the days of Noah. Yes. We're still in the book of Genesis. Yes. And we're not far from Genesis chapter 1. So this was not that far off in years between the days of Adam and Eve and the days of Noah. The kingdom of God, the prototype of it, was no longer in operation in the earth. But yet, here it is, families were still being created. As we read here, they were still marrying and having children. In other words, they were still, amen, going up on about life in families. Yes. They were men and women, boys and girls, populating the earth all around. Families. Come on, keep reading. The Lord saw that the wickedness of men, a man was great in the earth and that every imagination and intention of all human thinking was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved at heart. Wow. So the Lord said, I will destroy, blot out, and wipe away all mankind whom I have created from the face of the ground, not only man, but the beasts and the creeping things and the birds of the air, for it grieves me mm. and makes me regretful that I have made them. But Noah found grace, favor in the eyes of the Lord. Wow, wow, wow. So when we think about Noah and his family, yes. the Bible says that they found grace. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the days of Noah. As the scripture says, in those days, the hearts of the families and the people were wicked. Yeah. There was a global pandemic Indeed. of sin mm -hmm. uh, that wow. had infiltrated the earth. Wow. And it was and it didn't get better uh, after Adam and Eve. It got worse. And this global pandemic of sin, the Bible says, grieve God. <laughs> and we know the Apostle Paul said in the, in, in the book of Ephesians, grieve not, not the, the Holy, Holy Spirit of God, yes. which lives on the inside of you. But they were grieving God to the point where God even regretted making the Garden of Eden and putting Adam and Eve, the first family, in that garden. Mm -hmm. Remember now, when Adam and Eve sinned, God didn't kill Adam and Eve. They still had a, two sons, Cain and Abel, and others were still being populated. In other words, God had, didn't have it in his mind after the sin of Adam and Eve to kill man and woman. No, it was only after this global pandemic kept getting worse and worse and worse when people's hearts kept getting harder and harder and harder that God said, enough of this. Yeah. I regret mm -hmm. that I ever made man and woman in my image and in my likeness. Yes. I regret the day that I ever, amen, gave man an opportunity to be like me, mm -hmm. formed and created in my image and in my likeness. Yes. Wow. So this global pandemic led God to wipe out humankind. That's the breaking. Yes, yes. In order, to, in order for there to be a birthing, there must first be a breaking. Yes. Mm -hmm. God had to break the cycle of sin. Break that cycle of sin. Sin is mm -hmm. disobedience to God and his word. He had to break the cycle of sin because the people's hearts were so wicked and they were so hard that they refused to follow God's plan and purposes for their lives. He literally had to break the cycle of sin. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what God is really trying to do today in the lives of families, especially kingdom families and all families. He's trying to break the cycle of sin and disobedience, the self-destruction of our own lives. Wow. Self-destruction. Self-destruction. Headed for self-destruction. Wow. That's what was going on in the days of Noah. And I want to be real with you. It's going on right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. People are saying, I can't wait to get my shot or I can't wait till this pandemic is lifted so I can get back to partying, so I can get back to wow. doing my own thing like I used to do. Amen. But that's not the birthing that God wants to do. God doesn't want to do a birthing so that it can be all about you. He wants to be a birthing so new life can be produced in you. Yes. Yes. The birthing is not about us, but it's about the new life, the new opportunities, the new move of God that he wants to do in and through us. Yes, 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 yes. They were closed to that. Their hearts were hardened to that. They didn't want to receive anything that God said. They only wanted to do it their way, not the kingdom way. Mm, my God. Remember, the kingdom of God was in the Garden of Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden, rather, with Adam and Eve. So it was already in the earth. But they, choo they chose not to do it the kingdom way. Yes. And as a result of it, God had to do some breaking. Come on. Come on. So let's go on down to Genesis. Yeah. And we're going to go to Genesis 7, 1 through 12 in the Amplified Classic. Genesis 7, 1 through 12, and we'll see what else, what happened with Noah and his family. And the Lord said to Noah, come with all your household into the ark, for I have seen you to be righteous, upright, and in right standing before me in this generation. So he said, come with all your what? Household. Remember Hezekiah? The prophet said, get your what? Household in order. Mm -hmm. So here again, God has not changed his mind. When he look, talks about the household, he's not talking about the roof over your head. Mm -hmm. He's talking the, about the family that dwells in the roof that's over your head, under the roof that's over your head. He says, come with all your household in the ark. Imagine if Noah said, well, I don't know where my wife is right now. Imagine if Noah said, I don't know. I don't have no control over my kids. I don't know where they are right now, God. How could God use Noah if Noah didn't have his household in order? Yes. And, and we have to remember, too, these were grown adult children. He didn't start getting his house in order when his children were grown. He started when they were small, teaching them the word of God, reminding him, them who God was in their life wow. so that they would be prepared, okay, we go again, prepared for this time. Yes. When God would call them out to save their, this generation. So you mean to tell me, Pastor Renee, that, that, that there was really only one family wow. in the days of Noah, wow. around Noah's time, that had their households in order. There was only one family that God could say, you know what, I could, if, if there's just one seed, mm -hmm. I'll burst something new. Wow. Remember the sperm is the seed. Uh -huh. God's life, the order of life, the sperm is the seed that must impregnate the egg in order to form the baby, in order for the mother to give birth to the new life. Yes. There was only one seed, one, one seed, family one out of family. all the families mm -hmm. that was even concerned about how their kids were doing, even concerned about how the relationship of their marriage was going, even concerned mm -hmm. about their, their, their parenting and their, all of these things. One family. One family. One family that was, that was concerned about doing it yes. God's way or the kingdom the way. way. Yes. That one was family. Noah. One family. That was Noah. So then it goes on. Oops, sorry. It goes on in verse number two. Of every clean beast you shall receive and take with you seven pairs, the male and his mate, and of the beasts that are not clean, a pair of each kind, the male and his mate. Also of the birds of the air, seven pairs, the male and the female, to keep 
seed, their kind, alive over all the earth or land. For in seven days I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance and thing that I have made, I will destroy, blot out, and wipe away from the face of the earth. Wow. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Take note of that. Not just Noah, mm -hmm. but Noah and his family did all. Yes. It's important, it, parents, I'm, it's important that we, that we do our level best to make sure that we are training our children up to do all that the Lord has commanded. Let me speak to married couples. Married couples, it's important that you, in terms of you and your spouses, do all to make sure that your marriage is lining up and reflecting God's love for you and your spouse and his word. It's important. Oh Noah did all that the, the Lord, Lord commanded, commanded him. him. Come yes. on. Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters came upon the earth or land. Yeah. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives went with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and of animals that are not clean and of the birds and of the vows and of everything that creeps on the ground. There went in two and two with Noah in the ark the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. And after the seven days, the flood waters came upon the earth or land in the year 600 of Noah's life. Mm. In the 17th day of the second month, the, that same day, all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and burst forth and the windows and floodgates of the heavens were open, and it rained upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. So the question becomes this. What needs to be broken wow. off of your life? What habits, what things that are grieving God in your family, in your household, mm -hmm. behind the closed doors wow. of your home, what are those things? What are those activities? What are those words? What are those behaviors? What are those conversations mm -hmm. that need to be broken in your home Jesus, Jesus. and in the lives of your family members? Mm -hmm. This is the thing that God was looking for, and he couldn't find but in one family. And that's why Noah found grace. Yes, yes. See, when Noah found grace mm -hmm. and they went into that ark and built that ark, that was a protective covering. God entered into a covenant with Noah, even as Noah entered into that ark, so that when they hit the dry ground after the 40 days of the flood, guess what happened? Noah and his family and all the animals, because remember, as she was reading, it was a, a male and female animal. Why? Procreation. Male and female birds. Why? Procreation. Creation. God was going to restore. In other words, he was going to birth something new, and it was going to be family. New families populated, but he needed someone to be found faithful. And the wow. Bible said that when Noah was found faithful and they hit dry ground, Noah made ground. Noah made a sacrifice to the Lord, and when he made that sacrifice, it never destroy man in the manner of a flood or the way I destroyed man in the days of Noah. He said, I'll never do yeah. it again. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that thing, faithful. Yeah. He was found faithful. What does that mean? That means trustworthy. Mm. He was found to be trustworthy. God could trust him to be obedient. We hit, read in the text, he said that Noah did everything that God commanded him to do. Can God say that about us? Can he say that about us? Can he find us being trustworthy? Can he find us being accountable? Are we missing in action when God has need of us to serve in the kingdom? When we have talents, we have gifts, are we putting them to use in the kingdom? See, we want the birth and we don't want the breaking. We want the promotion, but we don't want the faithfulness behind the promotion. Yes. 
but we don't want, amen, the tithing that takes place in order for the birth. Come on now. Come on. Yes. See, we want the birthing. But we don't want to break it. Mm -hmm. See, Noah, amen, I promise you, he went through the breaking because they ridiculed him. Uh, they, they ostracized him. There was nobody that wanted to come on Noah's side and get in that ark. No, out of all the families, no other family said, no, I'm with you. I'm on your side. He asked God, can I join him with you all? Mm. There has to be a breaking of things in our lives that are not like God. Yeah. Of things in our families that are not like God, of things that we do in our homes that are not like God, in order for there to be a birthing. Yes. And we are in a birthing season. Yes. So, how do we get our households in order? Yes. Let us give you some steps, amen, and we'll cover this in our last two uh, 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 chapters here. Matthew chapter 6. Verses 31 through 34. And then Colossians chapter 1, verses 10 through 14. Come on, Pastor Ray. Let's start with Matthew 6. Okay. Amplified Classic. Amplified Classic. Therefore, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Therefore, do not worry and be anxious, saying, what are we going to have to eat? Yes. And what are we going to have to drink? Or what are we going to have to wear? For the Gentiles or the heathen, wish for and crave and diligently seek all these things, your, and your heavenly Father knows well that you have need of them all. Mm -hmm. But seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way, his way, his way, his way of doing and being right, and then... All these things taken together will be given you besides. Yes. So don't worry or be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow will have worries and anxieties of its own. Sufficient for each day is its own trouble. So let me give you a couple of points on that. Yes. The Lord says, Jesus says, put first things first. First things first. Mm -hmm. Put the kingdom of God first in your family. Yes. Have kingdom priorities. So he says the kingdom priority is God's righteousness. Mm -hmm. God's way of doing and being mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. That means obedience wow. to God's plan for you and your life yes. and your family and obedience to the word of God because that gives you God's plan for you and your life and your family. Mm -hmm. He says put first things first. Making God the number one priority in your families. Teaching our children to do the same thing. Wow. Teaching our children to do the same thing. It's important that we do that each and every day. Yes. Now, let's go over to Colossians chapter 1, okay. verses 10 through 14. Okay. Colossians chapter 1, verses 10 through 14. In the Amplified. Yes. That you may walk, live, and conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, and desiring to please him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work, and steadily growing and increasing in and by the knowledge of God, with fuller, deeper, and clearer insight, acquaintance, and recognition. We pray that you may be invigorated and strengthened with all power yes. according to the mighty the might of his glory to exercise every kind of endurance and patience perseverance and forbearance with joy wow giving thanks to the father who was qualified and made us fit to share the portion which in the is the inheritance of the saints God's holy people in the light. The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself. Listen. Mm, out of the control and the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Wow. In whom we have our redemption through his blood, which means the forgiveness of our sins. Yes. So break that down for us, Pastor Renee. 
there's several points here mm -hmm. that I believe the Lord is speaking through the Apostle Paul and even to us today on how we get our houses in order in terms of our families. First of all, our families must live to please God. Yes. We got to take off the old man and put on the new man. Come on. There must be a divine order in your household that says, you know what? We're going to raise a standard, and the standard means that we're going to live according to the word of God. We're going to do what's right because it is right according to the word of God, and it may not feel good to our, to our flesh. Mm -hmm. Come on. It may not satisfy your flesh, but we're feeding the spirit right now. We're, reading the, we're feeding the spirit of God. So families must allow themselves to work the good work of faith. Do what is called for us to do. But we've got to do that by increasing ourselves in the knowledge and wisdom of God. Yes. How do we do that? We study the word. We have devotion with our families. We, call, we have conversations with our children, with our spouse, about the word of God. So let me put a pause there. Please understand that my wife and I, we don't, we don't just come together to prepare a message on Sundays. We come together every morning. Every morning. God gives us a mandate to pray, pray before we leave our home. Mm -hmm. God gives my wife and I a mandate to pray before we leave our home. When our son was with us, there was a mandate yes. to pray. There were confessions that were done. There were things that we instilled and imparted in him. Now that we're empty nesters, guess what? We don't stop that because the children are not in the house. Come we on. continue that because God's spirit is still in the house. Yes. And it's important that we be fruit-bearing families. In other words, Jesus said, I shall know them by the fruits that they bear. Yes. What are the fruits? What are the, the tangible evidence that your household is doing things, living the kingdom way? Mm -hmm. yes. That's what Paul is talking about here. Yes. Go ahead. And our families must seek God for clearer vision. Yes. If we don't have a vision in our family of where we're going, the Bible tells us that we stumble all over ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we've got to make sure that the vision is clear and that we've received it from God and it's articulated in a way that every member in the family can understand where we're going. Yes. Our greatest joy in life is not the money that we make. Come on. The sizes of our homes. Our greatest joy is how we please the Lord mm -hmm. and how we treat one another in our households and in our families. Yes. If we don't, amen, value, like Jesus said, the kingdom priority, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all the other things, that, that's the birthing, the other things, they won't be added to us the way we desire and the way God prepares. Mm -hmm. It always starts with seeking and putting God first. That's the breaking. Because when you put God first, you're breaking your flesh. Yes. You're breaking your self-will to do things the way you want to do them. The way you want to move in your life. The way you want to decide how to do things. You're, you're giving up your self-will for God's will. Mm. Your way for Yahweh or God's yes. way. Yes. That's the kingdom way. Yes. Jesus was saying it. There has to be a breaking. you got to put God first, making him priority in your family. But then Paul here comes back and says it even the more. Yes. He says our families must exercise patience. patience. Mm -hmm. In the text it says patience. Wow, we're not short-tempered with one another? Yes. Then he says our families must get our joy back. He mentions joy in the text. Yes. That's where we left off last week. That was the last thing. Get your Get joy, joy back. back. Yes. He said by giving God thanks for all that he's done in our life, yes. that releases the pressure. Mm -hmm. As we talked about that the, earlier this morning, the pressure valve is released through our hallelujahs and our worship and our thanksgivings yes. unto yes. God. Then the next point, our families must switch systems. systems. Wow. Mm -hmm. Kingdom minds. What switch systems? Let me let me let me let me let me break that down for you. Yeah. He says, he says this. 
in verse 13, he says, and he has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of his son of his love. So when he talks about transferring, that's switching. That's switching. He's transferred us from the kingdom of darkness or the dominion of darkness. That's the kingdom of this world system. Right. When you get born again, you switch system. You are transferred from the world's way of thinking to God's way of thinking. Remember we said earlier that, that, that after Adam and Eve and then the flood came and everything was wiped out. The Garden of Eden was wiped out. The prototype of the kingdom was wiped out. But it wasn't wiped out forever because God simply moved it. Jesus said when they asked him, where is the kingdom of God? He said, the kingdom of God is in you. <laughs> My God. The kingdom of God is in you. The kingdom of heaven is in you. It just switched. Yeah. So when we talk about this transfer, this switching of systems, it's not a physical switching. No, we, Jesus it's said you're mindset. in the world, but you're not of the world. It's a, a mindset. mindset. Yes. Your mindset transfer, transfers or switches from a worldly mindset to a kingdom yeah. of God mindset. Yes. And in our families, we got to have the right mindset. We got to teach our children to have the right mindset. Yes. We got to have the right mindset in our marriages, how we treat one another. Even as singles, singles, you must have the right mindset. We all must switch systems. Yes. The problem with many believers is they have they 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 haven't switched systems in their mind. They're saved, but they still got a worldly mindset. Wow. They still got a will to do it their way wow. instead of God's way. Yes. But that's not the kingdom way, that's and that's it. why, Amen. There's no breaking and there's no birthing. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. God is saying, I want to burst some things yeah. in you. He's got yeah. the best. Prepare if you will allow the breaking break to take place. Yes. Oh yes. my God. The break yes. There's got to be a breaking be break before there's a birthing. Yes. You got to switch systems in your yes. mind. Yes. Yes. Transfer your thinking from a thinking of this world, the world's way, to God's way, the kingdom yes. way. Yes. Yes. Are you receiving this? Yes. He says the Father has delivered. Drawn us. He's drawing you through this word right now. Yes. Drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness. Yes. That's the world system. The world and system. transferred us into the kingdom, kingdom of, of his son. son. Of his what? Love. Love. Come on. What do we say the highest power in the kingdom of God was love? Love. Because God is love. Yes. Guess what? Paul validates that. He says, he says, the kingdom of God and his son in love yeah. because you can't have a kingdom that God says is his without love being there. Yes. Love has to be in our home. If you're going to, amen, make God a priority, if you're going to, my God, prepare yourself, you got to, my God, make sure that love, God's love is in full operation and in full effect in your family. Yes, yes. And then finally, finally, the last point, and we'll close it out. Yes. In whom we have our redemption. Come on. Redemption. Ah, that's the buying back of you. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Yes. See, Jesus paid a price. Come on. To give you the opportunity yes. to switch systems. See, switching systems is not free. Jesus paid that price with his precious blood Glory. for you to switch systems. Yes. For you to come out of the kingdom of, the, of yes. darkness yes. into the kingdom of his dear son. Uh -huh. In love. in love. So when we know it's a heavy price that was paid through the precious blood of Jesus being shed on Calvary's cross, why do we still play with it? Don't play with it. Allow God to destroy wrong minds. Come on, in your life. Yes. Stop playing with this world and start and start pleasing your heavenly. Yes. Yes. I need to say that one again. Stop playing with this world and start pleasing your heavenly father. Yes. Redemption means to buy back. He bought us back. God bought us back through the sacrifice of his son, through his blood, yes. which means, watch this, the forgiveness of our sins. Sin. What were we talking about last week? Forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness. 
Yes. We said forgiveness was one of those highest powers in the kingdom of God. Those pillars. We said love. We said forgiveness. forgiveness. We said grace. And we said faith. Yes. You got to have it. We said it. It, the kingdom won't work in your life work. if you're not operating and receiving those highest powers. Those pillars, yes. And here it is. Here it is. Everything we said last, last week, get your joy back. Walk in love and forgiveness. Paul sums it up right here in the text. Yes. God is saying something to us. When he keeps saying the same thing over and over, he's trying to wake our sleepy heads up. When he keeps saying the same thing over and over, he's trying to wake us up. Are you woke today? Are you woke? Are you woke to the kingdom way? Are you woke to the word of God? Are you woke to pleasing God? My God. Making God your priority. Yes. Are you woke to putting him first? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yes. Are you woke today? Yes. Because if you're still sleeping, you're just like the people were in the days of Noah. Ah. You're grieving God. Yes. You're grieving the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. And, and until mm -hmm. there's a breaking, there'll never be, be a, a birthing. Birth God wants to break things off of you. Yes. In order to birth things through you. New life. New life. In 2021. Yes. God says, I'm ready to birth. I'm ready to push it out. But will you let the water break? Ah, my God. Will you let the stuff go that causes your family to be grieve, to grieve me the, and to be God. far away from me? Yes, yes. In love and in forgiveness, in grace and in faith. Yes. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word of God today. You keep saying the same thing over and over. Yes, thank you, God. But we know in your word, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Lord, we thank you that you, that you gave King Hezekiah new life 15 more years. There was a breaking and then there was a birthing. <laughs> we thank you that Noah found grace in you. He and his family. When others in the world were grieving you, Noah found grace in you. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus Christ to die on Calvary's cross for our sins. That Lord God, we can switch systems today. We can, we can be transferred, as the scripture says, out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son in love. There may be some right now. You may be listening to this broadcast and you heard this last part about switching systems and you heard this part about redemption and how Jesus paid a price for us. But I want to submit to you that he's made his grace, his love, his forgiveness, his faith, his mercy, all of those things in the kingdom, those highest powers available to you today. But you got to make that step, that first step of faith. By stepping out of your comfort zone and making this the day of salvation for you and your family. For you, right now. You're listening by the, under the sound of my voice, whether you're in live service or you're listening virtually, and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. We want to give you opportunity to do so right now. is real. Jesus died. He was crucified and he rose on the third day with all power in his hand. He did it as the son of God just for you and just for me and all humanity. His desire is that you will say yes to him. His desire is that you will receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. If that's your desire, the time is now. The opportunity is right now for you to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Will you repeat this prayer after me? Dear Jesus, I thank you for dying on Calvary's cross for my sins. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins, my wrongs, my disobedience. 
to cleanse me with your precious blood, Jesus, from all unrighteousness. And I invite you in right now. I invite you in to my life to be my personal Lord and Savior. If you prayed that prayer today, that powerful prayer, we want you to know it's called the prayer of salvation, and you are now saved. You are born again. We want to get some information out to you. We invite you to go to our website. It should be on the screen at this time. Go to the contact page and select the opportunity on that contact page to give us your information. Send us your information. It'll come in the form of an email to us, and we will get back to you because we want to disciple you. We want to encourage you in your journey and your new birth. Your new birth in Jesus Christ. You are now born again. We're thankful for you right now. Now we invite those that desire to give and we pray that every one of us, whether you're live or in online and virtual, desire to give because the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. And if you desire to give today, we invite you to do so. You can give your tithes, your offerings, your gifts of love. You can give your tithes, your offerings, your gifts of love today. If that's your desire and you say, Pastor Anthony, I want to give, well, guess what? You have the opportunity to do so by going to our website and looking at the giving tab, giving online, or you can mail in your gift. There's a flyer that gives the address to mail into our P.O. Box. Or you can give right here in live service. Three ways to give that God has given us an opportunity. It's the kingdom way. And then lastly, as we close out today, we want to pray. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for your families. We've given you a lot of word, a lot of points, a lot of instruction. But we pray that you will take it to heart and bear fruit. Let it bear fruit in your life. Let the word of God bear fruit in your life. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to pray for those that are listening and tuning in by way of Facebook, by way of YouTube, and in the live service. We pray right now that they would take the word of God to heart that has been taught to them today and that it will bear much fruit in their lives and in the lives of their family members. We pray right now, God, that you will lift the heavy burdens and remove the pressure and the pain so that they could truly be all that you created them to be. Your kingdom families that are populating the earth. Lord, we thank you for those that received you as Lord and Savior today. They start this new birth. They are new creations in you, Christ Jesus. We thank you for them right now. Now, God, as we prepare to close this broadcast, Lord, we pray for the Meeks family and the loss of their dad. We pray that you strengthen Brother Weldon and his family. God, we pray for Sister Felicia. Lord God, that you continue to heal her body in the name of Jesus. All of those that are in need of prayer, all of those that are petitioning you, we pray that you would meet them at their point of need. God, we pray for in this birthing season that, Lord, we will prepare ourselves to push out the new visions, dreams, opportunities, and favor that you have upon our lives that you prepared for us. Lord, let there be a breaking of things in our families that are not lining up with your word so that we can be living lives that are pleasing and acceptable unto you, Jesus. And it is in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We love you and continue to walk in the love of Jesus. Bye-bye.